Okay, so welcome to this video on uh, the exponential distribution. So uh, this video is going to be on the exponential distribution. So I will put that as the title, the exponential distribution. And the exponential distribution is another very important continuous distribution. Uh, so our setup, as always, is that we have uh, some abstract probability space, which I will draw here. So we have our abstract probability space here. Uh, which it consists of a sample space, a set of events, and a probability measure mapping each of these uh, events onto a number between 0 and 1, uh, which obeys a lot of uh, axioms of probability spaces. Uh, and uh, then what we have is a random variable which is assigning uh, to each outcome in here a real number. And in the case of the exponential distribution, it's going to map it onto the, uh, onto the positive real numbers. So uh, the real numbers not including 0 all the way up to plus infinity. Infinity. So every real number that is positive, i.e. Uh, it's not a negative number and it's not zero. Okay, uh, so uh, what we do is we map every outcome in here onto a real number uh, between zero and infinity and um, and basically we make we want this to inherit the probability space structure of here of this abstract probability space i.e. we want it to be in some sense homomorphic uh, to this as far as the probability space structure is concerned uh, so uh, we make sure that any event in this new probability space over here which we could call the sample space uh, omega prime uh, the set of events curly f prime and the probability measure p prime we make sure that any event uh, in here has a corresponding event back here and the probability p prime of that event in here is the same as p of the corresponding event back here. Okay, uh, so uh, if uh, this probability distribution here is exponential, then what we write is we write the random variable is distributed exponentially. And again, just like the Poisson distribution, it has a single parameter uh, which is given the symbol lambda. And what this means is that the PDF of this of this random variable, uh, the probability density function of this random variable, i.e. Uh, the probability density function, remember, completely specifies the probability distribution. From it you can get the CDF, and the CDF completely specifies uh, the probability distribution. So from the CDF you can work out the probability of any event uh, in here. Um, Okay, so the PDF uh, for the exponential function, uh, exponential distribution is lambda e to the negative lambda of x. Uh, so basically, you give me a little x, and you, if you want to know the PDF uh, of the uh, PDF of the uh, of that value x, uh, then plug it into this formula. So if we plot this as a graph, uh, we get something of the form that looks like this. So if you put in zero, remember zero is not an element over here, but all elements just bigger than zero are. So we can ask, uh, to, in order to draw this, we will need to know what the value at zero is. So if we put in zero, uh, we will get uh, that it's equal to lambda, uh, because if you put in zero here, you get that the exponential to the power of zero, which is one, uh, so you get that f of x is going to be lambda. But of course, it isn't defined on zero, but it's going to converge up to that, uh, because it can take on any value value uh, as close as you like to zero. So it's going to look something like this. It's a negative exponential and it goes down like that. Okay, uh, so firstly let's just make sure that this is a valid PDF and, that, and for it to be a valid PDF we need to make sure that the area underneath this entire uh, PDF uh, is equal to um, is equal to 1. And I should just say that the PDF, uh, obviously it needs to be defined, well it can be extended uh, to uh, the entire real line, uh, but for all the negative numbers it's defined to be 0, and at 0 it's also defined to be 0. So uh, this should have an empty point there and it should have a, uh, a filled in point there. So it's 0 otherwise. So um, the PDF, if I define it more properly, uh, the PDF is equal to uh, lambda e to the negative lambda of x if x is an element of uh, the open interval 0 to infinity uh, and it's 0 if x is an element of uh, oh dear, not that. We're still not working with the extended real numbers. So negative infinity to zero and including zero like that. Uh, so that's how you would properly define this. Uh, so if we were to sum up um, the PDF over the entire real numbers, so from negative infinity to infinity, it needs to be equal to 1 if this is a uh, valid PDF. 
so uh, if we split this integral up into two bits we can split it up into the integral from negative infinity to zero of little f of x dx uh, plus the integral from zero to infinity little f of x dx and of course okay you might say well uh, why are we including zero here twice a single point isn't going to make any difference to an integral uh, so um, the integral from negative infinity to zero is um, is well the, on the interval negative infinity to zero the function little f of x is just identically equal to zero uh, so we are working out the area under uh, under this curve here all the way up here and that's just going to be equal to zero so now it's uh, this integral becomes equal to the integral from zero to infinity of little f of x dx now little f of x on uh, on the open interval zero to infinity but as i said uh, the, uh, the, this integral is going to include the point zero, but that is not going to make any difference to it because a single point isn't going to change the value of an integral. Okay, uh, so, um, uh, well, at least not in this case. Um, uh, but the integral from zero to infinity, on that interval, uh, the uh, little f, the pdf, can be taken to be lambda e to the negative lambda of x dx. Uh, okay, so if we perform that integral, uh, then we can pull the lambda out and then if we integrate e to the negative lambda, uh, we'll just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, we want to find an antiderivative of that. So an antiderivative of that is e to the negative lambda of x divided by negative lambda. Because if you differentiate this, uh, the negative lambda is going to come down and it will cancel with this negative lambda here to give you e to the negative lambda. And we want to evaluate that between 0 and infinity. So firstly, the lambdas cancel and we get that this is... Uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, negative e to the negative lambda of x minus uh, minus e to the negative lambda of zero. Okay, uh, so I'll just move this up. Uh, so if we take this limit, oh, I should have put that, that should be an n there rather than an x. Uh, so if we take this limit as n approaches infinity, uh, this converges on zero. We can just see that from the graph, that as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, the uh, limit of this function is going to be equal to zero. Uh, so that goes to uh, zero. And on this side, we're going to get plus e to the zero, which is one. So overall, this integral is indeed going to sum up to one. So that's jolly good. It is a, uh, a valid uh, PDF. Uh, OK. Uh, so now let's let's uh, look at um, the CDF. So let's try and work out the CDF of the exponential distribution. So CDF of uh, x, which is distributed exponentially uh, with parameter lambda. Okay, so the CDF uh, is defined to be uh, the big F of x, uh, which is defined to be the probability that uh, the random variable x uh, is less than or equal to little x. Now, that is equal to the integral from negative infinity to x of uh, little f of x dx. Now, um, okay, so uh, if x is below zero, if x is below zero, so if x is less than or actually equal to zero, then this integral is going to be equal to zero because you are integrating a function that is identically zero all the way along that interval. Uh, so the integral overall is going to come out as being zero. Uh, so uh, big F of x is equal to zero. If, however, x is greater than that, is if x is greater than zero, is greater than zero, then this integral is going to equal the integral from zero to x of little f of x dx because you can split this integral up into this integral plus the integral from negative infinity to zero of little f of x dx. But the integral of negative infinity to zero of little f dx uh, is going to be zero because on that interval, negative infinity to zero, uh, the little f of x is identically equal to zero. Uh, okay, so um, if we now evaluate this um, this integral, and I'll go on to the net over the page. Uh, so we're working out uh, big F of x, and we know. Uh, that uh, it is equal to uh, zero if x is an element of uh, negative infinity to zero uh, and that shouldn't include negative infinity. I've got them completely the wrong way around. It should include zero and it shouldn't include negative infinity. We are not working in the extended real numbers. Uh, okay, uh, so um, and now what we want to work out is what it is equal to uh, if x, we know that it's zero, the integral zero to x of little f of x uh, dx uh, if x is an element of uh, not including zero, zero to um, plus infinity. 
like that. Okay, uh, so let's work out what this integral is. So the integral from 0 to x and little f of x is lambda e to the negative lambda of x. Oh, and I should put in a dummy variable there rather so that it's not confused with this x up here. So let's replace it with the dummy variable t. And if we perform this integral, we can pull out that lambda. And again, we worked out the um, we worked out what the antiderivative of e to the negative lambda was in the pre uh, in the previous example. So e to the negative lambda of t over negative lambda uh, evaluated between zero and x. Uh, so we get that this is equal to negative e to the negative lambda of x minus negative e to the negative lambda of zero. Okay. Uh, so if we work that out. Uh, we're going to get that this is equal to negative e to the negative lambda of x, and then we'll get plus e to the 0 is 1, so we'll get plus 1. So this overall becomes 1 minus e to the negative lambda of x. So that is the CDF of the exponential distribution. Now, in the next video, what we're going to talk about is standardization of the exponential distribution and how to work out the expected value and the variance of the uh, exponential distribution.